friends welcome to your own youtube channel achievers data engineering my name is gyanendra and in this video we are going to talk about how to create a power bi visualization having a 30 60 90 days or a lifetime days filter right so as you can see here we have a power bi visualization where we are showing a sales over a period of time and to filter that we have a slicer where we can slice this data having like between 30 days 60 days 90 days or a lifetime filter right so how to do that let's take a look all right so first let me take you to the actual example that i have prepared so that you will get an idea of what i'm going to show you and what we are going to talk about right so you can see here i have this power bi visualization created which is showing a sales over a period of time which is order date right and i can filter this data either for the 30 days 60 days 90 days or lifetime all right so normally when we create any slicer using any order date right so we get some kind of a filter like this where we can you know obviously choose a date range but it doesn't give a proper view because we don't have actually you know we don't know how many days we are selecting right so that's why sometimes it's really you know important to give a filter like this where a customer can choose whether he want to check the sales of last 30 days 60 days 90 days or any other time customized range that you would like to give to the user right so how to achieve such visualization let's get started to do that all right so let me first jump on a blank power bi report so that we can get started i'll go ahead and connect with a sample data that i have got all right so i'll just go ahead and load this sales details table and let me show you how this data look like so here i have sales order id sales order details id order quantity product id unit price sales amount and order date now at this point of time we don't need any transformation or you know any modification in the data because all two important fields which we need to have that visual visualization is either sales amount and the order date right however definitely we do not have all the measures and all the slicers that we need we need to go ahead and create that all right so let's get started with step by step so first of all i'll go ahead and create a date table right so i'll go ahead and go into the modeling click on new table and i'll name it as date table and let's start dax as add column i'll use calendar auto all right and let's create additional columns for example year and we need date for that let's take month as well let me just create some more space here all right so let me name it as month number and it would be month again we need date right okay i forgot to add comma here now we need actually the month name so for that we will use format and again using date we can have a format of three times m close the bracket now finally we can have day so that would be actual date and we can have that again from date column and let's close the bracket now this should return as a date table so if we go in actually the data pane and take a look on our date table you can see we have got a date now because we have used calendar auto this calendar auto function what it does it go ahead and take a look in the existing data and takes a maximum and minimum date so whatever date column would be there it will scan those you know columns and pick up the maximum and minimum date and it will create all the possible dates between that date range and all the years months month number and you know days would be prepared accordingly right so now we have got a date table 
now we still need to you know categorize these dates so that we can you know have a bucket of 30 days 60 days and 90 days all right now we also need to keep in mind that when we let me open an excel file so that i can actually show you what i'm talking about so for example let's take some sales and let me create some random numbers ran between uh, let's take 2 to 200 all right and for example these are random sales now when i'm talking about 30 days let's take three days over here actually instead and six days and six days and nine days all right so now when i want to slice i want to give a filter for last three day sales then i want my data to return these sales now when i will select six days so i don't want these three only right i would need all six days which will include these three days and additional three days right and similarly when i would select nine days then it will include that six days and additional three days right so that's how we need to actually categorize our sales based on date so that actually this sale the first sale that we are talking about it should be part of three days filter six days filter and nine days filter as well and if i would add lifetime right so actually it would be part of this lifetime filter as well right so that's how we need to kind of categorize our date so how to do that first of all we would go ahead and create one more date table and uh, we would need to you know you know create this kind of categorization over there so let's get started i'll name it as let's take it as date range periods all right and let's take calculate table and we'll give table as a date table the date table that we have just created all right now in filters we would use a dax that would be dates between here we need to specify the date so because we have created a date table so we would make sure that we are using that date table instead of the you know inbuilt date field that we have got from the database right so our mention date table dot date all right oops i selected the day so let me change that to date all right now a start date would be let's take today minus 30 and in date would be today so here we are specifying that okay calculate the dates which are from you know this dates table and return us the dates which are between today minus 30 like from today till last 30 days all right so if i you know hit enter and let's go ahead and take a look in this date range period now you can see here it has returned those last 30 days right and if i just go ahead and uh, let me go to the date periods again if i you know change oops if i go ahead and change it to 60 it would now return as 60 days right so this is how actually we will go ahead and you know categorize these dates all right so let's what should we do now right so let's create some variables to make it simple right and let's create variable one that would be uh, let's take it as last 30 days all right and let's make it as add column so it would be calculate table and dates between so we'll give it name as 30 days today and now we need to specify all right we need to specify the name of the column all right let me just give it a name so let's give it a name as uh, okay let me just remove this additional equals here 
all right now it name as days range okay and now we can give this new like the column that we are adding we will give it a name so let's name it as uh, 30 days all right and close the last bracket so what error we are still having all right so okay okay i forgot the comma is still over here all right so now as we you know just saw that in example that this will actually return a column is return as a column and based on the dates available in that date table it will give us a, you know a keyword in the column value as a 30 days so similarly we need to create a buckets of 90 days 60 days and lifetime all right so i'll just go ahead and copy this and let me make some space i'll make it as 60 similarly for this one i'll make it as 60 because we can reuse this formula and i will again copy this create some space i'll make it as 90 days this one as well 90 and again 90 all right now for when it comes to rest of the data for example when you're talking about lifetime data let's name it as lifetime data in that situation we don't need any filters right so like when it comes to add columns in calculate table we will directly pass this date table and we would remove any kind of filter from this and let's name it as right uh, go ahead and name it as go ahead and like name it as date range and let me remove this additional and bring it over here just to make it clear all right so column name remains same i will just name it as life time uh, let's make it as one word actually all right so now we have got all the variables created so what we want to return from this is union of uh, we'll use union and we will return the union of last 30 days then last 60 days and last 90 days and finally the lifetime lifetime data all right so let's hit enter and let's take a look whether we have got the correct result or not all right so now we have in this date range periods we have got additional column which says days range and it has got let me minimize this it has got 30 days 60 days 90 days and lifetime right so now if i go ahead and select one date so let's take an example of 12 12 21 all right okay great and yeah, let me select the single date all right so as we just saw that example in excel right so similarly this particular date that is uh, 12 december 2021 this date is a part of 30 days as well it's part of last 60 days as well and 90 days as well and lifetime as well however if we like go ahead and select any other date for example let's say 2011's date so it should be part of lifetime only it will not come in the range of either 90 60 or 30 days or if we choose any date which is in 21st and uh, let's take an example of uh, right we are choosing a date from october 21st so it will come in a range of 90 days and lifetime not in 30 and not in 60 days all right so that actually shows that we have got the correct data which we were looking for now it's super easy we can go ahead and pick up a area chart all right so i'll take this area chart and let's drag total sales and like sales amount and let's take order date okay let me just expand it a bit now i'll go ahead and choose a slicer and go to go to the date range periods and select this days range all right so let me 
go to the settings and make it kind of a horizontal so that we'll have a better look and also let me just go ahead and give some nice look turn on visual borders and shadows and same for this bar chart all right so if i go ahead and click on 30 days 90 days lifetime it doesn't work right but we have got all the data created right so now one thing that we still need to do here is establish the relationship between these tables so it's again super easy the order date of actual sales details table should be joined with the date table and date and this is the additional date range periods table we created we can again go ahead and connect with the dates now one thing that we need to keep in mind a relation between these two dates table so this date table which is nothing but like cal uh, calendar auto you know date and this is a date table which we created where we have those buckets for as per the dates right so what we need to do here we will go into the properties and make this cross filtering as both side to have that work now we'll go ahead and click on okay we have got both side filtering applied now once we will go to the visualization it will start working so now we can go ahead and filter this based on 60 days 90 days lifetime or 30 days just to have a better look maybe we can go ahead and turn on the data labels and markers all right so now it is working perfectly fine we can filter this like data as per 30 days 60 days 90 days lifetime or if you want to add seven days just to give you know a weekly analysis all right so i hope you have got a good idea and a good understanding how to create this visualization in power bi having these kind of slicers so i hope you have liked the content and if you still have any questions please do let me know in the comments i would love to answer that questions and uh, thank you so much for watching Keep learning. Have a great day. Thank you so much.